Hi, and welcome. Uh, so we're in the kitchen again, and I am going to um, show you how to roast chestnuts. And I have a one pound bag of Italian chestnuts. And typically you will be able to find chestnuts in um, your grocery store, usually in the produce department. Sometimes you can find them during other times of the year other than just um, around the holidays, meaning Christmas. Um, but sometimes you can find them uh, in other types of uh, markets or marketplaces where they will be in bulk, which is actually the best way to try to find um, chestnuts. And that way, if they're bulk, you can sort through them and try to find the ones that you want to bring home with you. Instead, I, I don't really know exactly what all of these are going to look like when we cut the bag open, but the first thing we wanna do is examine them and make sure that they um, look good. There are a few things you'll want to um, look for with chestnuts. And first of all, you wanna do a little bit of a, a press test. And if you hear a clicking sound, that one you'll want to uh, discard. If you find any that have a hole in them um, or they've already been cracked across the top, um, you don't want those. Now this one, this one is soft. Oh, and it just, it just cracked open. So we're not going to use that one. Uh, if they have any mold on them, you won't want to use those either. So I've got a couple that that are a little bit on the soft side. Now there was only one package left um, the day that I bought these. So I've also had them sitting for several days. So um, we'll see, we'll see what we end up with. All right, now here's an example of a little bit of a clicking noise. That, that is also one to discard. Um, so far, the rest of these are looking pretty good. Oh, that one's, yeah, this one's got a bit of a crack in it. And it's making some noise. So we are going to just use these that's got a crack. So I've got um, six that are not going to work out for us today. And that's okay. Um, this is just a demonstration. Um, I love chestnuts. And historically, uh, chestnuts uh, typically represent um, abundance, uh, fertility, uh, prosperity, um, the life and death cycle. Um, there's a lot of history surrounding them um, with mythology and folklore. Uh, so it might be something interesting that you might want to uh, look up someday. But uh, here we are, I've got these and what I need to do is rinse them off, just give them a good rinse off and then I'll be right back. All right, we are back. And what we wanna do is score the top of the chestnut. Now I see um, many people just do one score with a knife, just lengthwise, um, just from like left to right, and that's fine. Um, I grew up with my mother scoring it um, basically with a cross on the top, so she would score it this way as well as this way. Um, either way will work. And the reason why you want to do that is that once these heat up in the oven, um, they have um, the chance to explode and then you'll have a mess all over the inside of your oven. So that's obviously something you want to try to avoid. Um, but I'm gonna just try to show you, if I can, um, how to score these. They are not easy to score. Um, so you just, you want to be a little bit mindful of doing this or having children do it. You might not want to have any children do this. Um, okay, so I've got
got up a chestnut like that. You, well, it's best if you can try to avoid um, cutting into the the meat of the chestnut. You're just trying to score the outer layer. So there is our score. And when they bake, what will happen is um, you'll know that they're getting close to being done when they start to open up. And so these four flaps will start to peel back and, um, and that will be helpful when you have, have it scored twice um, to eventually you'll, you'll want to peel these back once they've had a chance to uh, cool down a little bit. Uh, the one thing about scoring them just once across here is that in the event that it's not easily removable from the shell, um, you only just have those two sides to work with. Whereas if you have um, a score of a cross um, along the top, it will be easier because you'll actually have four corners to work with to um, help release the chestnut. So I'm gonna go ahead and score the rest of these off camera and uh, I'll be right back. Are back and I have finished uh, scoring all of these chestnuts. And the next step is to um, saturate these, just pour some hot water um, or very, very warm water over the top of the chestnuts. And the reason why uh, we're doing this is because it will help keep the chestnuts moist during the baking process. Because if we didn't do this, if we don't add any moisture at all, they will be incredibly dry and um, really not very pleasant uh, to eat. So we will add some water. And this is to the point where they are covered completely. Now, I'm going to allow these to uh, soak for about 10 minutes before we put them in the oven. So the oven is um, heated at 425, 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, we're just gonna let these soak for 10 minutes and then I'll be back. Okay, so our chestnuts have had an opportunity to um, sit in that very warm water. And uh, what we're gonna do is just arrange them on our baking sheet. And how you'll wanna do that is um, flat side down on the baking sheet. So you'll find that for the most part, these have um, a very definitive flat side and then there's sort of a dome shaped top. Every so often you'll run into one that is not only flat on the bottom, it's flat on the top as well. Um, and that's, that's okay. Um, just pick a side. Um, so we are just gonna put these on here. And we wanna put these in the oven. Um, again, I've got it heated to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And I will have them in there for about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to keep an eye on them and uh, check them at 10 minutes because my oven does tend to run a little on the hot side. Uh, but this is, this is how I've got them situated on the baking sheet. And um, I'll go ahead and put them in and um, we'll be back in about 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the most. All right, so we are at about the 10 minute mark and I'm just gonna open the oven so you can see that they have indeed peeled open.
So what we'll do is um, I'm going to take these chestnuts off of the baking tray and I'm going to set them back in the glass bowl and I'm going to place a um, very damp towel over the top of them. But I just want to show you, point this out, uh, this one right here. This is a chestnut that is no, it's no good. It's not a good one because it, it looks like it may have some, some mold in it. So I will discard that one, but I will take a close look at the others. It looks like all the other ones uh, should be in good condition. Okay, so the chestnuts are out of the oven and um, I have a towel. You don't need one this large, even uh, a towel the size of a washcloth will do and I saturated it uh, under the faucet with some warm water, rang it out, and then what you'll want to do is place this towel over the top of the chestnuts that just came out of the oven. So it's going to look like this. And so you'll want to leave that uh, damp towel over the chestnuts for about 10 minutes and then we'll be back and we'll begin to peel them. Okay, we are back. It's been 10 minutes and I've just removed the towel from the chestnuts. And so we had one that sort of really opened up and so we've got a little piece right here. Mm. Moist. And chestnuts have um, a sweetness to them. They're not sweet like candy, but there's an underlying sweetness to them and very tender and moist. And because we soaked them, um, after we scored them and before we put them in the oven and then this last step adding the damp towel before peeling them uh, it really does make a difference so here's one you just want to take a corner and pull it back and take another corner and pull it back. And you're just literally just peeling the chestnut. I think I have a helper here. <laughs> it's midnight. So this one was a little stubborn, so it broke in half, but that is okay. There, there is uh, no right or wrong way to do this. But oh, here's another one. It's nice when they come out whole, but sometimes they, they don't always. Not bad. So I'm gonna finish um, removing the uh, outer shell from these chestnuts and I'll be back and I'll share with you uh, how to store them and uh, approximately how long they'll last. All right, 
right, so I did successfully remove um, the shells from my chestnuts. And uh, this is what it yielded. It's a small container. I did end up with some whole ones, but not too many. Uh, some of them did break apart, so don't expect all of them to come out in one whole piece. Um, so I didn't end up with as many as I thought because uh, that's mostly due to my uh, not preparing them. As soon as I, as I bought them, I did let them sit for um, a couple of days. And how you need to store them will be in, um, in a container, airtight. Um, if you leave them out at room temperature, you're looking at maybe two to three days. Um, refrigerator, airtight container for up to a week. And then uh, longer term uh, storage in the freezer in an airtight container. And um, if you remove them from the freezer and you want to eat them, you can either thaw them out or you can uh, gently warm them up and you can, you can enjoy them for another time. So. Uh, that is how to prepare chestnuts. It's a really fairly easy, simple um, preparation for chestnuts. So um, I hope you decide to give it a try the next time you see some chestnuts somewhere. Uh, pick up a few and give it a try. All right, take care of chestnuts. And you can usually find these um, in your grocer. I love chestnuts and um, they hold a lot of meaning for some people, um, especially this time of year. They can represent um, comfort and warmth. Um, historically, they have represented um, abundance and um, what else? Oh, Nina, come on. No like a little cat brain. <laughs> I'm not sure what a cat's brain looks like, but it looks like somebody wants to try some, huh? I got somebody interested in trying these. <laughs>